So you want to get into college. Good for you. This video will provide a logistical and systematical approach in applying, as well as providing a realistic perspective to issues that many colleges leave in between the lines and in the air. The first part of this video will touch upon several pivotal parts in the college process. Requirements, prerequisites, applications, tests, letters of recommendation, and financial aid. Are you ready? Let's begin. So you want to apply to college. But do you have all the prerequisites and requirements for you to be eligible? What do colleges look for in prerequisites? I think a good uh, guide to what colleges are looking for, basically colleges want you to take the most challenging courses that you can handle without overwhelming yourself. So for every person that's going to be different. But a general guideline for what is a college prep curriculum would be the the UC and Cal State A through G requirements and very briefly that would be two years of history, four years of English, three years of math, two years of lab science, two years of language, and one year of visual and performing arts and then at least another year of college prep electives. That's required for UC and Cal State schools, um, but most colleges are looking for at least that. If you can handle three, four years of math, that would be great. If you can handle more language, that is great. But those, the one, the what I just mentioned is the minimum. Find out as much information about the colleges before you apply. Why? It's a really good idea to research the colleges as much as you can before you apply. Uh, first of all, colleges are always looking for students who are a good match for their school, and so when you apply, it's a good idea in the essay or at some, in an interview or some time to say why you want to go to that particular college. But the other thing is, co co ex applying to college is expensive. The application fee is usually around $60. And then you have to have SAT scores sent, you have to have transcripts sent, it adds up. So you want to make sure that you're applying to colleges that, that are a good match for you and uh, that you have a reasonable chance of getting into. What types of tests do I have to take to get in? There's a few kinds of tests required for colleges. The, the first test is the SAT reasoning test. That's a long test, it's about three and a half hours. You usually take that at the end of your, in the spring of your junior year. Uh, most colleges require the SAT reasoning test. Another test is the SAT subject tests. For example, the UCs require two subject tests. Those are hour-long tests in individual subjects that measure what you actually learned in the class. Another test that a lot of students choose to take is the ACT. The ACT test has four sections. It has a reading, math, writing, and then science reasoning. And um, most colleges are going to take it in place of the SAT, so it's a good test. The only other kind of test that colleges are going to look at are the AP tests. The AP tests are advanced placement tests. Those courses are based on a college curriculum. The courses are usually taken in the junior or senior year. A common one is U.S. History, English, Chemistry, Calculus. Those are some of the AP tests. A quick review. You have the SAT. You have the SAT II subject test. You have the ACT. And then you have the AP test. What else do I need for colleges? When you apply to college, you need to send your grades. That's probably the most important thing. They want to look at what courses you take. They're also going to look at your SAT or ACT scores. And in addition to that, they look at some more subjective things. They'll ask you to write an essay, and that essay is just a way for the college to kind of get to know you. It's your opportunity to make the grades and the scores kind of come alive. You should take the essay really seriously, spend a lot of time on what you want to say, how you want to present yourself. Teacher recommendation kind of makes the grades and the scores come alive. Recommendation 
is from a teacher that knows you really well. The better a teacher knows you, the, the richer your recommendation is going to be. How can I afford college? Is called the FAFSA. It's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That's something that all colleges require. It's free. The student fills out part of it and the parent fills out part of it and it's based on both financial information from the parents and the students. The other form that, that a lot of private schools, not all, but some private schools will require is called the CSS Profile. That's a form put out by College Board and you can find it on the College Board website. That asks for more specific information that individual colleges are looking for. All colleges require the FAFSA and some private colleges require the, the CSS profile. The only other form that you have to worry about if you're going to school in California and you're a California resident is what's called the GPA verification form. Uh, that's, uh, that's basically an application for California grants. So it, it's in conjunction with the FAFSA and it's a very easy form to fill out. Basically you just have to put your GPA down, your counselor signs it, and you sign it. It takes five minutes at most to, to fill it out and send it in. But because it's so easy to fill out, it's also really easy to forget. But that's, it's really important that you fill out that GPA verification form if you're applying to colleges in California. A quick review. There's the FAFSA that all colleges require. Then there's the CSS profile that only some private colleges require. And then if you're a California resident, there's the Cal Grant. What does FAFSA give me? What constitutes financial aid? So when you apply for financial aid, a college will look at your circumstances based on the FAFSA and based on the profile and they will put together what's called a financial aid package. When you're admitted, they will offer you a financial aid package. That package is made up of basically three parts. How is the financial aid package divided into these categories? One part is grants. That's money that a college or the, the government just gives you. That's just free money that you don't have to pay back. The second part is loans. Loans are uh, money that you borrow. There's both student and parent loans. The student loans are obviously given to the student and the student does not have to pay those back until after they graduate from college. There's also parent loans and those parent loans are, are usually low interest loans that parents can borrow. Um, but they do have to start paying them back as, as soon as you borrow that money. The third part of a financial aid package is what's called work study. Basically that is asking the student to work at the college when they are a student there and they will guarantee the student a job for a certain amount of money. The student has to work and the amount of money that the student makes is is considered money that will be contributed to the tuition costs.